Here we are with Animal Crossing Wild World, one of my favorite games ever released on the Nintendo DS, of course, the original one. Now, with this game, I had the question for you. Why did this guy, of all people, get into Smash Bros? Why did he become big enough? And, of course, why did he even exist in the first place? Well, I'll hopefully be able to answer all those questions today in this episode of Smash to the Past. All that said, let's get this going. So, a long time ago, we got the message from Nintendo that Villager would be the new addition to Smash Bros. Now, it seemed kind of crazy at the time that this peace-loving guy from a game where you pretty much just made friends, went fishing, and sold your soul to the big man, could really make it into a fighting, or I guess, party game, as some would call it. As for me, I was astonished that such a thing could even be done, and that they could add someone with so little connection to fighting, but in the end, they really pulled it off. But I'm not here to tell you about every single move reference, and how they all connect to Smash. Instead, I'm here to show you the journey that Villager had to go through with his game series, his development cycles, and just how he got popular enough to end up in the world-renowned game of Smash Brothers. Let's get down to business for this video by starting with the development of the original game. Now, the idea for this franchise came to be when Kazuki Iguchi had troubles with the feeling of loneliness and isolation when he had to move from one of his jobs at Nintendo. The feeling he got gave him a really great idea to create a game where you could never be alone and where you'd always feel at home no matter where you were. This anti-loneliness simulator, you could say, began with the name Animal Forest, a very fitting name as all the future games were full of all different types of animal creatures that you could interact with. He envisioned where you could create an avatar at least somewhat similar to you and get going on a life simulator of sorts. The main point of the game was to simply enjoy it peacefully and get to know your town and just have fun. As well, there were some side objectives that you could do, including paying off your loan and helping the nearby villagers with their needs if you wanted to. The game itself began as an N64 game in Japan, but was also eventually ported to the GameCube with a few changes. This simple idea began what is known today as Animal Crossing, and really got the ball rolling for the future of the series. Now that I've introduced the main series game, I want to go how it's changed for the better, and also how it's kind of stayed the same. So, in general, the basic formula has never gone away in this series. It's always been just a kickback and relaxed casual game through the entire franchise, and I don't really ever see that being changed, at least in the main series games. The violence has always been minimal in all of them, and in general, those around you act like you would expect a neighbor to. But those are just what's kind of stayed the same. Let's talk about some of the things that really made the series grow. The first thing I feel really made it grow was the fact that it became a handheld system game, and that was just a huge step forward in the series. It made the game playable anywhere, not just at your home, and it could make you feel as if you were at home, legitimately everywhere, and that's what I feel like the creator really wanted this entire time. As well, the game received online play later on in Wild World, so that you could share your world with a friend and vice versa. As a kid, I know I personally purchased Animal Crossing Wild World for this main reason. I had a friend that wanted me to get it so that I could play with them, and experience at least some of the fun with them. So, I got myself a copy. Multiplayer always spreads games like this, and I feel like Animal Crossing's way of play works perfectly with a quick meetup in multiplayer. Finally, I'd say the mayor mechanic really made the games great in New Leaf, and made it continue to grow and get better and better. Now, I know not everyone loved being a mayor, but the choices it gave you were pretty amazing. It was a big step up from just being another one of those villagers, and gave you some feeling of power. And I'd just say in general, after you mix all these upgrades up in a pot, then it can be pretty easy to see why the series turned out so great over all this time. Now as far as actually gaining traction and becoming big enough to get in Smash, I'd once again put that crown on the game Animal Crossing Wild World. Now this game made a pretty decently sized community from the GameCube flourish into a gigantic one on the Nintendo DS. This is probably because of the portability, the easy multiplayer, and finally I'd actually say the cost. The game was way more accessible to just more people because of the price and because it was on the DS and more people had the DS, so in general it put the series in a big position to grow more and more, and the game sure did that. As well, they kept making new games for this series, and they never took a 10 year break like some of the Nintendo studios seemed to do. This made so that we could all stay connected to the game the entire lifetime of the series, and of course it kept the community as big as possible. Hooking up the series for now, I'd say that it is keeping strong, but that we are in need of a new console or handheld game. Now, I'm assuming that this will come out on the NX slash Wii U like many other games, but I guess only time will really tell. Now, the reason we need this is because quite a number of fans are a bit distraught with the last two weird mini-game games that Nintendo tried to sell, aka Happy Home Designer and Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Now, I won't say that these are the worst games ever, but a new main series game would be appreciated to keep this grand series continuing in the right direction. Finally, how do I wrap this all together? Why does this loving, pun-creating, happy life simulator game get a fighter in Smash? 
Well, of course, I have to say the obvious answer first and my personal ideas after. So the obvious answer is Animal Crossing is a really big franchise and Nintendo wants more people to feel a connection to Smash Bros so that they'll buy it. They want all their best IPs slash characters in the game and Villager has more than earned his keep from sales and reputation alone. So that's a pretty simple and easy answer to understand, but here's my own theory, a game theory you could say. I feel as if they added him to give some light to this already amazing fighting game. When you see one of these guys in a Smash Bros match, you just can't help to feel some of that happiness and bliss that you had when seeing him in the original Animal Crossing games that you previously played such as New Leaf or City Folk. And the inclusion of Villager really just makes the game feel a lot more lighthearted. Now I know that he's kind of a joke fighter, but I personally love how they added such a personality to the game, and I hope that they really keep him for future renditions. But of course that was just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Now, I kid, before we truly end, I just want to go over some of the content in his original games that ended up in Smash other than the fighter himself, and kind of connect the dots for those who haven't played the game and aren't planning to. There won't be way too much, and there will just be an outro after this, so the main point of the video has been completed if you are on a tight schedule, so be on your way, good sir. But if you have a little bit of extra time to spare, then listen up. Starting off with the easiest thing, the stages, we have Town and City, based off the town and the city appearing in the game Animal Crossing City Folk. We also have Smashville, which is based off the entire Animal Crossing franchise, with most of the important things things in view such as the Able Sisters, City Hall, the Museum, the Player's House, and many other animals' houses. Its point is to give you a rough idea of how your world may be created when you play a game of Animal Crossing, and I feel like it does that pretty well. Finally, for stages, we have Tortimer's Island on the 3DS. Now, this appears in the game Animal Crossing New Leaf as you leave your hometown to go to the old Nair's New Island, where you can get some rewards for tasks that he sets. Of course, there are also many trophies in Smash 4 which tell themselves where they come from, so there's not really a reason to talk about those. And finally, there are the items. The first one being the Pitfall, which you can dig up in Animal Crossing or you can buy from the shop. And you can use these things to make your friends fall into the ground online, or you can run into them yourself if you really want to. There is also the Beehive in Smash 4 which acts similarly to the game. In Animal Crossing, when you cut down a tree or shake it, sometimes a beehive may fall, and this will lead to it stinging you and giving you a hurt eye. Of course, in Smash 4, they couldn't follow that exact mechanic to the point, but they did still make it attack you and do a lot of damage to you. Finally, there are the assist trophies. Mr. Rossetti was one in Brawl that was cut in Smash 4. He appeared in all the Animal Crossing games when you shut down the game power without saving. He would talk for a while and then let you go. As, and as we know, this happens in Brawl as well. Well, at least his talking habits follow. And finally, we have Isabelle. She comes from Animal Crossing New Leaf and is an assistant of sorts. In Smash Bros, she throws out random fruits and helps everybody, similarly to the game of Origin where she tries to help everybody. Nice job making it all the way to the end of the video, glad you tanked through that final part. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did enjoy this kind of different pacing that I had for this, and the editing that I did put in also. If you ever want to see more of these in the future, or smash to the past episode, make sure to tell me. It was really fun to make this one on Villager, and I'm fine making any future ones in the future, of course, if you just tell me that you want them. Comment down below how you want me to improve, what could easily be changed. With that said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.